So when I originally moved here, I moved here with my mom, my children. At the time, it was my fiance, and we were looking to kind of just start over and start a whole new life. Unfortunately, ended up in a domestic violence incident, and it just kind of shattered everything that I thought in my mind was was going to be kind of a, a happy ending and a, and a new beginning. There was a lot of, of confrontation and he filed paperwork and threatened to take my kids away from me and, and sue me for custody of the kids. And that I had so many sleepless nights because I was like, I don't know where to turn. It's how do I represent myself? How, what is it that I need to do on my end to make sure that I still have my children with me and that my children are protected and they're covered. And how do I prove my my side or how do I tell my story, you know, where a judge would listen? Because when you don't know the law, you don't want to make mistakes in court. You don't want to say things that could, you know, have an adverse outcome just because you don't know. And got a, a letter in the mail saying that you've been accepted and we're happy to help. And that right there just lifted so much worry and so much stress off of me. We were able to start the process with getting some temporary restraining orders in place and just so that there was that sense of protection because I just, I, at that time, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I'd, and every day leaving out of the house, you know, it's constantly that looking over your shoulder and you know, you know that he's in the same town. Are you gonna run into him? Is there gonna be a problem? It, it, it was tr very trying. And we won. So I I could not at this point ask for anything more um, because it has given all of us, myself, including my children, that sense of stability. It's given us that, that sense of comfort. Um, and I just, I, I, I couldn't say thank you enough. Like there's just not enough words and enough gratitude that I, that I could ever show to say, just to say thank you. It's easy to feel sorry for ourselves some days. We can't go out much, we can't travel much, but our situations really pale in comparison to so many in our community. People have lost their jobs, people who fear losing their apartment or their home, people afraid their children won't have enough to eat, women facing increased domestic violence. This year, Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada and our pro bono attorneys worked harder than ever, and that's not an easy thing to do. We did this to help clients like Takoya to right wrongs and change lives. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, and I want to welcome you to the 20th Annual Pro Bono Awards Luncheon, hosted by the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. I want to thank everyone who helped put this virtual event together, and my thanks also goes to Executive Director Barbara Buckley for her tireless efforts. I especially want to thank all of the attorneys who've made generous contributions of their time, expertise, and energy as volunteers for the Pro Bono Project. Your work helps the most vulnerable members of our community, and it's truly a lifeline for so many families, especially right now. Because of your dedication, Nevadans have been able to stay in their homes and to shelter in place during this unprecedented pandemic. Congratulations to everyone who's been recognized this year, and thank you for your continuing efforts to provide access to justice. It would have been easy for our volunteers to give up on pro bono work this year, but so many of them did just the opposite. This year, our Ask a Lawyer programs, now happening virtually, doubled in size. We started a new Ask a Lawyer program to help small businesses struggling for survival in the pandemic's aftermath, and lawyers took on the causes of our clients and the outcomes changed lives. So welcome to the 20th Annual Pro Bono Awards Luncheon, our first and hopefully our only one offered virtually, and our chance to recognize some community heroes 
and the difference legal aid and pro bono made in our community this year. Before we give our first award, I want to acknowledge our sponsors for today's events. Raising enough funds to support our work in a pandemic isn't easy, and we thank those who are able to give to support us this year. I'm honored to be co emceeing this event with our pro bono project director, Noah Malgeri. We'll honor some pro bono superstars, listen to some pro bono attorneys share their favorite pro bono memories, and hopefully inspire you. Hi, my name is Doreen Hartwell of Hartwell Fowler Limited and I'm the chair of the Pro Bono Advisory Council for the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. I've been practicing law for 20 years now, and I truly believe that having a law license is a privilege, and what comes along with that privilege is the responsibility for each of us to actually provide pro bono legal services to people who otherwise would be unable to afford it. During my 20 years of practice, I can truly say that some of my most rewarding cases have been my pro bono matters. Um, the clients are so appreciative for the help that they receive and what may seem like a small matter to some of us is life-changing for many of them. There are so many different ways that we can um, provide assistance, legal assistance to those who need it. And this year, 2020, there's more need than ever before. So um, I ask that each of you watching take on just one case. One attorney, one case makes such a huge difference. Thank you. And now the first award. Our first award is our Public Interest Law Student of Distinction Award. We are so fortunate to have one of the finest law schools in the nation right here in our community. The William S. Boyd School of Law at UNLV has been committed to public interest law, pro bono service, and a partnership with our organization since its inception. Through the leadership of its four deans, a superb faculty and staff, they grow the next generation of lawyers committed to equal justice under the law. Practicing public interest law can be hard. The clients face unimaginable hardship and dealing with fraudsters who take advantage of clients is hard to watch. But then we see the law students show up. They are excited at the opportunity of making a difference and changing the world. They help buoy our spirits. We watch them juggle multiple demands, have aha moments, gain confidence and grow into attorneys. We see them grow into our own staff attorneys and pro bono attorneys and community leaders. The Public Interest Law Student of Distinction Award recognizes a law student who has made a substantial commitment to the community 
by doing public interest work and promoting access to justice. Our recipient this year is a recipient of the State Bar Nevada Professional Development Fellowship, and he worked extensively with our organization, helping those needing immigration assistance. He helped more than 100 people renew their DACA permits, all on a volunteer basis. Through it all, he never failed to light up whatever room he was in with his infectious smile, putting clients and colleagues alike in a positive frame of mind. Said this year's award recipient, it's the look on the client's faces when they come in. They have that worried look. I try to make them laugh, and when you put their application together, you feel their sigh of relief. They tend to leave with a smile. For his dedication to public service and pro bono, it is my great pleasure to present this year's Public Interest Law Student of Distinction Award to Christian Gonzalez Perez. Hi, I'm Azra Ozdemir and I'm the 2020 Melanie Kushner Access to Justice Fellow. So when I started law school, I came with the purpose to do public interest work. Um, it was really important for me to give back to the community that has given me so much. And for a little bit, I was worried that I made the wrong choice. I didn't know if law school was the path for me. And that's when I found out about Melanie Kushner. Melanie's passion for pro bono work, the, all the things that she did to kind of pave the way for pro bono in Las Vegas was incredibly inspiring for me, so I was ecstatic when I found out that I was going to be the 2020 Fellow. Uh, during my time at the pro bono department, I got to really learn about some of the needs of Nevadans. I got to learn about the things that were lacking in our justice system, and I got to work on projects to make it better. Um, it was incredibly eye-opening, and it's really changed my future and the way that I look at the law and the things that we can do for Nevada as a whole. So with that being said, I really, really want to thank all of the people that made this fellowship possible. I am so thankful and so grateful for this opportunity. It gave me the confidence that I never knew I had, and I honestly couldn't have done it without the incredible people who not only believed in Melanie, but also believe in me. Thank you guys so much. Hello everyone, this is attorney Saga Rake. I just want to thank uh, the Legal Aid Center for all the work that uh, you guys do, uh, making Las Vegas and our valley a better place. Uh, as an attorney who's been fortunate enough to participate in a ton of uh, Ask a Lawyer programs as well as take pro bono cases, I'm so proud and happy that all of us can help contribute to our community. I've had some wonderful experiences, the most recent one being a client who was unfortunately taken advantage of by a dealership uh, that we were able to represent pro bono. Uh, and it means a lot to us as a law firm, to our community, and to everybody that uh, people like you, people like us, help contribute to our great uh, Southern Nevada legal community. I'm so proud and honored to be part of this group, and I hope that we can all continue to do amazing work and help our community through our services. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. As you can see, pro bono service is an amazing opportunity for attorneys, and we are extremely grateful for their dedication to our community. In addition to the representation we provide to clients in need, our office runs two state-of-the-art self-help centers in each of the courthouses. But many of the over 100,000 clients we see there need a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a volunteer attorney in areas such as family law, landlord-tenant, small claims, probate, debt collection, or for special communities such as veterans or the homeless, and for those seeking legal immigration status. Never has this been truer than, than during the current COVID crisis, during which so many in need of assistance have been wary of venturing out in public. That's why we converted our highest demand Ask a Lawyer programs to a telephonic format in order to best meet the needs of our customers. And as Barbara mentioned, at the same time, we dramatically increased the capacity of our programs. As a result, over 2,500 clients this year alone have benefited from the sessions with our volunteers. Given the incredible impact these volunteers have made, it is only fitting that we recognize their efforts. The two biggest areas of need for the Ask a Lawyer assistance over the past year have been in family law and landlord-tenant. 
The pandemic and the related isolation and economic consequences have led to an incredible 50% increase in demand for our, our critical ASCOLAR services. Thankfully, we rely upon a cadre of superstar volunteers in both of these areas who tirelessly assist our clients and in the process have really become the definitive subject matter experts for our community on the legal, legal impacts of the pandemic. So this year, we recognize one volunteer from each of those two areas, Mr. Larry Phillips and Mr. Carlos Morales. Over the course of the last year, Larry served an astounding 20 sessions of landlord-tenant Ascalair, serving nearly 90 landlord-tenant clients who were all in real dire need. He also took on a direct representation pro bono matter during the year. In addition to his ongoing direct representation, Carlos served an incredible 130 family law clients with pressing legal matters over the course of the 24 Ascalair sessions that he staffed last year. And he provided an essential information when few other options were available for panic clients seeking urgent counsel. So for their incredible contributions, we are delighted to be able to honor Larry and Carlos for their dedication to providing consistent, urgent counsel to our community's hardest hit over the course of this last year. Hi everyone, I'm Paula Armeni, the Managing Partner of Clark Hill and Vice President of the State Bar of Nevada. I have been a CAP attorney for over a decade. I've also taken on cases where I help people seal their criminal records and most recently took on a civil rights case from the Federal Pro Bono Project. Pro Bono work is extremely important to me. It allows me to use my talents and my skills to help those in the community. It allows me to be a voice for those who often don't have one. It also allows me to represent our profession in the most positive light possible, showing those in the community what good this legal profession can do. Hello everyone, I'm Senator Jackie Rosen and I'm proud to represent Nevada in the United States Senate. I'd like to thank the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada for hosting this event and for recognizing the important role that pro bono legal work plays in our state as well. You have also worked so hard this year during especially challenging times to provide legal assistance to those in need. This year at the 20th Annual Pro Bono Awards, we celebrate each of you, our honorees, and your tremendous achievements. Your time, dedication, and expertise has undoubtedly helped so many hardworking Nevada families receive legal services to help them navigate the multiple crisis they face during this challenging year. To everyone, from the attorneys, judges, and volunteers, Nevada sends its gratitude for your service, and we thank you for continuing to make our state great. Nevadans are so proud to have a legal community that actively looks to protect its citizens. Because of your dedicated efforts to expanding access to justice, our most vulnerable residents can feel safe and protected, and we are one step closer 
to ensuring that all people have equal access to justice. Thank you, and know that your work makes me and Nevada proud. Hi, my name is Damon Diaz. I consider pro bono service an important part of our profession. My primary practice area is bankruptcy. In my practice, I encounter young families starting out, individuals experiencing life-changing events, and quite often people reaching or at retirement age. It's rewarding when you recognize relief in a client's eyes. There's a satisfaction in knowing a client has placed their trust in your judgment, and then you've delivered on the promise to help them through a tough situation. With pro bono service, we're able to deliver this relief to a part of our community that might not otherwise have access. I believe that a part of the privilege we've been given to practice this profession is a call to assist when we're able. Noblesse oblige. Give often and openly because we can. I'm grateful for the privilege to assist. Our next award is the Nancy Becker Judicial Award of Excellence given in honor of Nancy Becker, one of the original founders of the Pro Bono Project. This year award goes to a giant in the legal field. Following a distinguished career in private practice, this jurist spent over 24 years on the Nevada judiciary, first as a district court judge, then a Supreme Court justice, including serving as the chief judge at both levels. He showed signs of his intellectual prowess early when he graduated from law school at only 23 uh, before entering private practice. He served as the co-chair of the Specialty Court Funding Committee, which helped nearly ensure that every community in Nevada had access to a specialty court program. He co-chaired the Rules Committee to ensure judicial process was accessible through electronic means relied on so much in our modern society. He worked tirelessly on the rules for the Nevada Supreme Court mediation program, which gave Nevada homeowners a lifeline to save their homes. He's been a stabilizing influence on all he has done because of his intellect, his demeanor, and his caring for all Nevadans. There hasn't been one occasion where he doesn't think about the unmet legal needs in, in our community in making a decision. And no one ever gets mad at him because he is so professional that even when he rules against you, you feel good. His character, work ethic, and commitment will be missed as he retires from the Nevada Supreme Court. We are so pleased and honored to give this year's Nancy Becker Judicial Award of Excellence to the Honorable Mark Gibbons. Hi everyone, my name is Linda Lay, and the reason why I do pro bono work is because I feel that it's very important for attorneys to help those who do not have a voice um, in court. Um, over the seven years of practice, my most impactful case I had uh, relates to a depend dependency matter where there are three siblings in a group and they were placed and adopted out. Um, and that was the most important case that I've ever had only because I got to see them grow in the two and a half years and to know that they were safe and sound and being adopted together. Um, I think the Legal Aid of Southern Nevada has provided so much resource for the community. And I wanna give a shout out to everyone I've worked with um, over at Legal Aid. I think it's amazing what you guys do. Um, and I anticipate doing this for the rest of my career in regards to pro bono work. Thanks. Hi, I'm attorney James T. Levitt. I've been a licensed attorney since 2012, and since then I've, I've made a point of taking um, you know, multiple uh, pro bono cases, mostly bankruptcy cases. Partners in pro bono 
uh, program that they run has given me the opportunity to teach those skills to law students um, and work on uh, pro bono representation with them. Uh, ultimately, I get a lot out of it, and I believe that it's my duty as an attorney to take pro bono cases, as I, I believe it's the, the duty of all attorneys, too. Uh, we all need access to the legal system, and pro bono uh, helps us with that. Thank you very much. I got a call from one client. He had been uh, out of work since the shutdown in March um, due to the pandemic. He hadn't been receiving unemployment benefits, however, for almost half a year. Um, he had two kids. Um, he had a family to take care of. I investigated the issue that was preventing him from receiving his benefits, and I was able to help him get those issues resolved. So when he got the news that those benefits were on the way, he told me that it was the best news I would receive all year, and it was really great to be able to deliver that news to him. My name is Wesley Sue, and I'm the inaugural Community Justice Fellow. The One Year Fellowship is sponsored by Paul Paddle Law, and it provides new attorneys an opportunity to gain experience in the public interest sector, I'm working as a staff attorney at the Legal Aid Center. But when I learned about that fellowship, I knew I had to jump off the opportunity. And it was a real dream come true to be selected as the first Community Justice Fellow. I started the fellowship in August of this year. After four months in the Consumer Rights Project, I'm gonna work four months in the Family Justice Project, and then after which I'll work four months in the Children's Attorneys Project. Um, and I can't wait to see what lessons and experiences are in store for me. And I really wanna thank um, Paul Padilla and the Legal Aid Center for this opportunity. It's really been a dream come true. Representing children who have been abused or neglected can be very difficult work. But without an attorney, that child has no one to advocate for them, to fight for their rights, whether to see their brother or sister, to stay in the school they love, or to have their wishes on whether they go home or not heard by a judge. Each year we present an award to a volunteer who has done an outstanding job representing an abused child. This year's recipient started his career with a preeminent Silicon Valley law firm and is a highly experienced litigator at both the trial and appellate level. Over the past few years, he has taken on over a dozen CAP cases. This past year alone, he built 286 hours on five different CAP cases. His commitment to these children is undeniable. Let's watch a short video to learn more about this remarkable advocate. Hey everyone, my name is uh, Charlie Liu. I'm an attorney here in town. Uh, Jason has always had a commitment uh, toward helping children. Before joining my firm, Jason specifically asked if he could continue doing his pro bono work through the CAP program. And I said, you know, absolutely. Uh, these are the cases that really motivate Jason. Um, he explains to me all his theories um, just because something is done a certain way doesn't mean it has to be continued to be done in that way. Uh, he really takes his time, uh, uses his resources to help the children that he advocates for. Uh, he is definitely very deserving of the Myrna Williams Children's Pro Bono Award. I can think of no other individual that is dedicated to helping children as much as Jason is. So Jason, let me be the first and hopefully not the last to congratulate you on this award. Congratulations, Jason. I met Jason Ferris through working at Clark County, Nevada, Department of Family Services. He was the CAP attorney on one of the cases that I was the specialist on. The case was regarding um, domestic violence and physical abuse in the home. And so he was assigned to one of the siblings on this case. My first impression of him, I was very pleased to know that he was the client's um, attorney. He treated the client with the utmost like respect, integrity. He's definitely dedicated. Um, he's committed. He's definitely loyal to the client and he makes sure that he advocates for the client and makes sure that the client's voice is heard. Um, and not only that, he puts safety first. Pre-COVID, um, you know, he would go to the school and visit um, the client at school. Um, he would make sure that he communicated with him by phone. Um, and then once COVID happened, post-COVID, um, he would still communicate with him by video if that's what was needed um, because he wasn't able to go to the school anymore. 
um, but he made sure that he communicated with him on a regular basis and checked on his well-being, um, made sure that he was safe. If he had any concerns, um, the client was always open to talking with him. I would often ask, you know, have you spoke to your attorney? And he would always tell me yes. Not once did he ever say, no, I haven't heard from him or I haven't talked to him. No, I don't know anything. He was always well informed. So Mr. Ferris did a very, very wonderful job at making sure the client was informed about his own case, as well as making sure that his voice was heard. I think that he has a natural um, knack for helping others and he is a servant and he is here to serve the community and I think that's something to be commended for. I would like to say thank you Mr. Ferris. It was a pleasure working with you and congratulations on winning Myrna Williams Children's Pro Bono Award. Congratulations. Hello, this is Governor Steve Sislak, and I wanted to briefly say thank you and congratulations to Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada during the 20th annual Pro Bono Luncheon. I wanted to give a special thank you to my dear friend, Barbara Buckley. Thank you, Barbara, for your compassion and dedication and always stepping up when Nevadans need you most. Thank you to the staff and volunteers for all the work you do on behalf of our great state of Nevada. Have a great virtual luncheon, and I hope to see you all soon hopefully in person. Our next award is our William S. Boyd Award of Excellence. Bill Boyd is one of a kind, a legal and gaming pioneer, a philanthropist, a doer, one of the earliest board members of Legal Aid Center when it began in 1958. He chaired Legal Aid Center's two major campaigns, our building campaign and our endowment campaign. To commemorate his extraordinary support, we created the William S. Boyd Award of Excellence to award a corporation or business entity that showed significant leadership and access to justice. This year's recipient committed its philanthropy and leadership to impacting homeless and at-risk youth. They reached out to us because they know of our strong advocacy for kids. We were the beneficiaries of their AT&T Believe Las Vegas campaign. They provided us grant funding to represent teenagers and seed funding to launch a brand new mobile app for at-risk teens called Rise. Because teens don't need manuals, they go online to find services. Thanks to AT&T, our app, prepared in conjunction with Clark County Social Services, will have content that will lead teenagers to get the resources they need. For their leadership and commitment to Legal Aid Center and our most vulnerable child clients, this year's William S. Boyd Award of Excellence goes to AT&T. I'm Emily Dyer. And I'm Matt McKissick. We're associates at Brownstone High at Farber Shrek, and we led this year's 2020 Associates Challenge for the benefit of the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada. Modeled after a successful competition started by Brownstein in the Denver market more than 15 years ago, the inaugural Associates Challenge launched in Las Vegas in 2019 with the goal of pinning associates from Southern Nevada law firms against each other to see which firm's associates could raise the most money possible for the Legal Aid Center and walk away with the Associates Challenge trophy. Due to the difficulties of this year, we knew it was going to be a tough ask for some of the associates to participate. But we were determined to move forward with this year's challenge, knowing that so many in our community would likely be reaching out to the Legal Aid Center for help. So we shifted the tone of this year's challenge from one of competition amongst the associates to community with the associates. This year, the associates at Brownstein, with the help of Mackenzie Warren and all of the associates at McDonald Carano, and Chelsea Jensen and all of the associates at Lewis Roca Rock River Christie were able to raise more than $9,000 for the Legal Aid Center. Brownstein is dedicated to giving back to our community, and it was an honor to give back to our community through the challenge. The Legal Aid Center is such an important safety net for everyone in our community, and their help is needed now more than ever. Thanks to Brownstein Hyatt, McDonald Carano, Lewis Roca, and everyone who participated in this year's challenge. And a special thanks goes out to Michael Kalich, who provided the single biggest donation amongst all the associates who participated. 
We're looking forward to next year's challenge. Until then, we encourage you to donate your time or resources to helping our community bounce back and rise up following this tough year. As the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, lawyers have a license to practice law, a monopoly on certain services. But for that privileged status, lawyers have an obligation to provide legal services to those without the wherewithal to pay, to respond to the needs outside of themselves, to help repair the tears in our communities. Thanks everyone, and stay safe. My name is Carmen Avello. I've been taking pro bono cases for over nine years. I've had a lot of meaningful interactions with many children in many placement homes. It's been very rewarding. Um, some of my favorite clients, I can't name them by name, but I'll call them J and K. J came into placement at a couple months old and I got to meet him when he was eight months old and have been working with the family, the placement family. I worked with them for many months until he was ultimately adopted. Right after getting adopted, birth mom had another child and Kay came into the system and was placed with the same family. The family immediately reached out to me and let me know that they had baby brother. So I was able to reach out to Legal Aid of Southern Nevada and let them know that I would also like to represent baby brother. And I was able to be appointed as his cap attorney and I'm still in close contact with that family have gotten to watch both boys grow up and baby K is about to be adopted. It's very rewarding to be a part of something so special. The LEAD Awards were created to honor and thank the LEAD Foundation for the incredible challenge grant they gave to us in the year 2000. At that time, we were housed in a small building and we're trying to pay off our mortgage. Ms. Christina Hickson presented us with an amazing opportunity. The LEAD Foundation would donate $1.3 million to us if we could match it and increase pro bono time. Well, we met that challenge. It led to a huge increase in volunteers and the securing of title to a small piece of land. Our success with that challenge ultimately led us to where we are today. More volunteers than we ever thought possible, as well as a centrally located headquarters. I would like to thank Ms. Hickson again for her belief in us. Our first LEAD award is the award for the most pro bono cases by a law firm. This year, we are thrilled to be able to recognize three firms that went above and beyond in terms of taking on new pro bono matters. Our winners each accepted 13 new pro bono cases this past year in a whole variety of areas, including landlord, tenant, cap, consumer, bankruptcy, federal, probate, divorce, name change, custody, adoption, and appeals before the Supreme Court of Nevada. We are pleased to present the 2019 LEAD Award for the most pro bono cases by a firm to the firms of Louis Roca, Roth, Gerber, Christie, Hutchison and & Stephan, and Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber & Track. Our next award is the lead award for the most pro bono cases by an attorney during the year. This year's recipient has been a consistent, tremendous supporter of pro bono for literally decades. His exemplary dedication to serving Legal Aid Center and its clients is unmatched. This past year, he accepted nine new cases from Legal Aid Center's pro bono project. We are pleased to present our 2020 lead awards for the most pro bono cases by an attorney to Mr. Marshall Willick. Thank you, Marshall. The lead award for the most pro bono hours by a law firm goes to a law firm that has successfully institutionalized a culture of giving back, embodying the highest ideals of the attorney's professional responsibility of pro bono service. This firm consistently makes pro bono an integral part of their culture and identity. In light of this tremendous contribution, we are pleased to present the 2020 Elite Award for the most pro bono hours by a law firm to the Dickerson Carasconi Law Group, whose attorneys contributed an amazing 1,037 hours of pro bono on behalf of Legal Aid Center clients.
This year's lead award for the most pro bono hours by an attorney goes to an attorney who makes pro bono a core part of her practice. She has done considerable asylum work in the past as well as defending copyright infringement claims brought by copyright trolls in federal court. And in fact, over the past year, this graduate of the US Air Force Academy volunteered several hundred hours to helping her pro bono clients. Please join me in graduating the lead award winner for the most pro bono hours by an attorney, Bethany L. Ray of Council at Greenberg Trout. Congratulations, Bethany. Hi, my name is Shayna Plaxine and I'm with Nepper and Clark. Pro bono is an integral part of why I became an attorney and I've always had at least one pro bono case. However, this year I was on maternity leave and then also had my toddler home for a bit during quarantine. So I struggled with the idea of taking a pro bono case when I felt so behind with work. That's when I signed up for a landlord tenant ask a lawyer session. It was a specific two hour commitment that I could make in a time when committing to more just wasn't feasible. Then I signed up for more weekly slots and being able to participate virtually has really helped and allowed baby Abby to join me occasionally on calls. I encourage everyone to get involved. Even if you feel like you don't have time, I bet you can fit in a two hour Ask a Lawyer session and the folks we're helping are so grateful. Thank you. Welcome to our 2020 class of the 100 Hours Club. These attorneys have given very generously of their time, representing their pro bono clients, and they far exceeded the 20 hour goal set by Rule 6.1. So to you, thank you. This year's recipient of the Law Firm of the Year Award goes to a firm with a truly exemplary commitment to pro bono and access to justice. This firm's Las Vegas team contributed over 600 hours this year, an impressive accomplishment for an office with fewer than 45 attorneys. Amazingly, they had three of their attorneys in the 100-hour club. The firm is active in so many of our programs, including the Nevada Supreme Court Appellate Program, our CAP program with consumer cases, domestic violence cases. Let's watch a quick video about this year's Pro Bono Law Firm of the Year. Hi, this is Mark Hutchison. Hutchison and Stefan is proud to have teamed with the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada to serve the legal needs of the Valley's most vulnerable residents. This is Shannon Wilson, partner with Hutchison and Stephan. We thank all of the firms and attorneys who partner with Legal Aid, and we challenge those who have yet to be involved to take a case in 2021. Thank you, Barbara, Noah, and the whole pro bono team for coordinating this crucial work that improves the lives of all Southern Nevadans. We at Hutchison and Stephan are grateful for the work you do.
We are honored to present the 2020 Pro Bono Law Firm of the Year Award to Hutchison and Stefan. Since we first began presenting pro bono awards, our final and most prestigious individual award has been our Pro Bono Attorney of the Year Award. This award recognizes an attorney whose life and practice over the last year can serve as a singular inspiration to others to embrace or renew a dedication to pro bono. This year's recipient took her first cap case just over a year ago. She wasted no time at all jumping in with both feet. Since that time, she has represented seven very young children, including two sibling groups and three pre-verbal babies. Just over this past year, her first year as a CAP attorney, she donated over 320 hours of her time representing these children. Her amazing dedication to her clients and willingness to get involved in a huge way, despite a very demanding practice, really distinguishes her from her peers this year. Please join me in congratulating our 2020 Pro Bono Attorney of the Year Jennifer Abrams. Congratulations, Jennifer. Twenty twenty has already officially achieved legendary status among the years for the sheer level of challenge, difficulty, and general adversity it has brought upon us. Families were hit with the fear or sometimes reality of a mysterious health affliction, their livelihoods placed into jeopardy from the ensuing mitigation measures, children languished at home for weeks and months instead of going to school with their peers, all while political and social turmoil aggravated the anxiety. Stress levels have not been higher in recent memory. These overlapping challenges predictably manifested in an increase in the need for civil legal help. Domestic violence, consumer fraud, landlord-tenant, business issues, these cascaded as people attempted to do their best to hang on to their health, to their families, their livelihoods, and ultimately, their sanity. We have never asked more of our core volunteer attorneys than we have this year. The collective and individual responses to that challenge should make all of you very proud of the legal community of which you are a part. As bleak as things have been, I can assure you, without the generosity of this community, things would have been much worse for our beloved city. And now, the challenge continues into 2021. But I feel confident that as we move forward and mercifully leave 2020 behind, that remarkable spirit of pro bono service will continue to help soothe some of the pain our community will inevitably encounter. Thank you for all you do, for who you are, and for the invaluable service you provide to those who cannot do for themselves. To all of our volunteers, you are truly a credit to the legal profession.